I want to preface this tutorial by saying that these provisional pro uh, prosthetics do not uh, provide the same support as a cast metal frame would with proper active and passive reciprocation. And also we are very familiar with the yield strength uh, and creep and mechanical properties of cast metal and wrought wire class, so we know exactly what undercuts to engage. We also can have rigid tooth support, so therefore the periodontium is not taken advantage of. However, in these temporary, often compromised situations, a flexible partial can be utilized temporarily. It's important to properly inform your patients of the risks associated with these prosthetics. They're absolutely contraindicated in alcoholics and patients with dementia. And you have to have a patient sign a waiver that they're not gonna sleep in these prosthetics because of risk of aspiration. I use Onyx Tough here because it is radio opaque and I really like using Sprint Ray's retainer material because of the flexibility. And remember, patients could inhale anything, even real partial dentures. You could have tracheal bronchial uh, aspirations, crown and bridge and fixed prosthetics could also be inhaled. All right, guys, so fire up ExoCAD, go ahead and hit default client, put the patient's name and select the tooth that you wanna replace. Here is tooth number four. I'm gonna go all the way down to partial denture and I'm gonna hit flexible denture. Now you don't really need to go any further than that into the settings here. I think a lot of people get so lost into all these advanced settings. So let me show you these. You just hit the advanced parameters right there. You can see there's like a million things and honestly none of it really matters um, to all of these kind of parameters are easily um, editable in the actual software itself. So it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and hit antagonist. Any tooth on the bottom, it doesn't matter, and hit save and hit that design button. So now we're going to load the upper jaw first. So find that upper jaw OBJ, ply, or STL. And then I'm going to load the lower jaw next. And it's going to come flying in at the occlusion that was scanned. So however you scan this is how they're going to appear here. First step is to get the orientation kind of dialed in and then um, hit next. And the second step is to further alter the orientation. This time we do have a block out model view with a survey line. So rotate and hit set from view. And you're gonna see that arrow, that green arrow is going to change positions along with your survey line. The salmon color represents the height of contour and everything apical to that salmon color represents future block out wax once you hit apply it's going to generate this virtual wax up bottom then you're going to go to freeform and you're going to hold shift on your keyboard and you're going to remove wax where you want to engage just for the class tips and that is it you don't need to remove any wax anywhere else you don't need secondary retention on the lingual um, if you did do secondary retention on the lingual 200 microns is the most you'd ever want to engage there for your reciprocation now um, the next step is wanting you to place a tooth just by clicking the mesial and distal surfaces. However, I went to expert mode, I right clicked the model and I hit to copy mirror and I went to copy and I clicked tooth number five and then it made a perfect copy of tooth number five and I simply dragged it into tooth number four position because I just find that it's easier anytime that you can and you have an existing tooth, just go ahead and design with that because it's going to have the same you know, angle to the transverse ridge and everything that the patient's natural teeth have. Now I went back to the wizard and I'm in the freeform tab now. And I'm gonna go ahead and my add remove tool, I'm gonna to get a little contact there. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth some stuff up. This video is real time. This should not be more than a five minute design, maybe a five to seven minute design when you're teaching. And so now I'm gonna add just a little micro anatomy here. So going to my add remove tool and I'm hitting my little paintbrush, holding my shift down my brush is on the smallest it could go and it's on the smallest brush size i'm just going to add some triangular fossas there and that's about it before you proceed on you want to adapt all your intersections it's going to cut the ponic the proximal contacts and if you had a high occlusion area it would go ahead and adapt that i'm going to go to my show distances show contact areas i'm going to turn on my adjacents and i'm going to go ahead and cut all intersections so that you could see exactly what's going on you're going to then hit next so in this stage, you're going to draw your frame on your block out model. I like to be above the height of contour on the lingual surfaces to avoid that block out wax margin. I'm going to extend up to the cuspid. Now I'm going to remove my pontic tooth and I'm going to turn that off so that I can see my guide plane areas. You could go up to your object browser and hit that or you could hold control on your keyboard and hit your rolly ball button. 
you want to be above the block out wax and then and this is a slight error here because it was hard to see i want to follow exactly my block out line on my for my super bulge clasp you want to just come coronal actually to that block out on the on the buckle there and then into the clasp with your undercut engagement so you just want to be again coronal to that block out um, on the buckle with the clasp so that it's sealed otherwise you'll have a gap there if you leave it in your actual block out double click where you started on the lingual and pick your material thickness for a split file you want two millimeters thick here you could be safe with two millimeters for most things uh, for a small thing like this and now you hit next and you're into the free form your um, gingiva and you could optionally come in here and you know festoon a little bit although i think it's kind of overkill for such a little thing like this but i'm just showing you you could use your add remove tool and you could create little gingival cuffs and and then you could smooth all that out <clears throat> little root eminence there i typically would not do that in such a small case like this i would just go ahead and keep it as is and hit hit basically um, a few little tools here to just freeform my smooth my border so I like to do this on, on almost every partial where I am going to just go to my smooth tool. I'm not holding shift. I'm just smoothing and I'm going to smooth my border just a little bit to keep it just a little bit feathered where that tongue might rub up against it. I do have the check boxes for keep bottom boundary fixed here. Um, this way that I could keep my original margin line. And then once you have that, that's basically all there is to it. Um, you could from here now hit next and it's going to actually ask you for your fit um, and your thickness. So the thickness under the tooth is super important. You need it to be at least one millimeter for a split file 3D printed partial denture. So I'm going to go ahead and bump that arrow all the way up to one millimeter. And then your tooth pocket gap, 200 microns is a really safe value for a passive fitting tooth. You do not want a um, tooth that is hard to push into the socket. So when you hit next now, it's going to create the actual adapted gingiva, which is the file that has the um, fit to the tissue and the socket in it. So you can see that perfect little socket there with a 200 micron gap around the tooth. And then I'm going to turn on my merge part, which is the tooth that I need to print. And so now um, we're ready to go. ExoCAD will automatically save these in the um, project folder. So I'm going to open up Rayware. I'm just going to show you really quick how to nest this thing. Right where oftentimes we'll bring it in in the wrong orientation. So you want to rotate it to where the tooth socket is towards the build plate and the fitting surface is up. Add supports to your class tips. Absolutely essential to have the proper distribution of supports. Check out our nesting guide if you're confused on that. And then for the tooth, it's actually super easy. You're going to load the tooth into a different platform because obviously you have to print it at a different material, in this case, Onyx Tough 2.0. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate the tooth so that the occlusal surface is towards the build plate and the fitting surface is actually up, similar to the um, <clears throat> partial denture frame. And this is going to be super easy to edit. I'm going to go ahead and add individual support tips, one to each cusp tip and one to each marginal ridge and with an optional one in the central groove. And that is all there is to it, guys. If you wanna come hang out with me at the Mod Institute and learn more about 3D printing and design, um, check us out. We have some incredible courses and removables. We have online courses. And of course, I'd love to see you down in Charleston.